Hey everyone, Andy Raphael from eTechnics.com and it's been a while since we kind of did the whole what's in the box thing and that's I guess how this video is going to start but it's going to end very very differently. Let's do this. So for anyone who's into kind of custom loop and anyone who follows Corsair, you probably heard on the grapevine, well, through some leaks, and we were actually one of the ones who leaked it, and we did take it down because we're very respectful journalists, but Corsair are releasing their own custom loop water cooling gear, and that's essentially what we have here in these two mammoth sized boxes. So I guess let's start with this one. This one's a slightly smaller one. So um, by the time you're actually watching this, we will be at Computex in Taiwan and uh, Corsair would have, I guess, officially announced what's inside here and kind of what's going on. So the whole point of this video is I'm going to attempt to unbox everything, go through everything, and kind of show you what's coming to market from Corsair and potentially kind of build up a loop, show you what it's all about and, uh, and go from there. But I don't want this video to go on too long, so there might be some sort of, you know, really raspy kind of dodgy editing in this, but we're going to sort of try and muddle through as best as we can. So, what I will do is obviously overlay lots of glamorous B-roll with kind of, you know, close-ups of all the components and stuff like that as well. So we have everything from your XF uh, ball valves. So Corsair, obviously branded Corsair black and yellow, like we'd expect. Uh, you get one in each box. Kind of seems a little bit unnecessary on the size of the packaging, but obviously we will open these up and, and kind of go through. So in this little pack here, I've got an XF ball valve, an XF adapter, and an XF fill port. Uh, obviously uh, the fill port is uh, G quarter inch fittings. We also have, and these are all in black as well, XF adapters. So we have 45 degree rotary adapters here. We have, oh, these ones are heavy. Okay, so there's actually two in here. Uh, these are for hardline. So I'm guessing all the hardline ones are branded as such as hardline, and then the um, soft tubing ones are just branded just normal, not soft line or anything like that. So XF hardline, we've got uh, 90 degree, 14 millimeter uh, outer diameter fittings, and there's three boxes of them. Um, for the normal kind of soft tubing, we have 90 degree rotary adapters as well. We have uh, 14 millimeter uh, fittings, and these are just your normal um, fittings. Uh, we have compression fittings for 10 millimeter. So these are actually 10, 13. So 10 millimeter is your inner diameter. 13 millimeter is the outer diameter. Um, if you work in inches, that's uh, three eighths and half an inch. And in these, you get four in a pack. So I actually quite like the boxes, even though I said it seems a little bit unnecessary. It's nice that kind of, it's not taking up too much room. Uh, when you look at sort of other brands, they put them in just like plastic wallets and they can get a little bit sort of tricky. So coolant wise, we have, they calling it uh, the XL5 clear fluid. This is performance coolant. There is a liter here. Long lasting pre-mixed performance coolant is ready to go right out the bottle with no additional additives or inhibitors required. Protects copper, brass and nickel with advanced non-toxic anti-corrosion inhibitors and antibacterial growth suppressors. Uh, so yeah, it's basically ultra pure water, 89% uh, glycerol, is it glycerol, glycerol? Glycerol, that's the one. 10%, uh, uh, freezing point is minus eight degrees, boiling point is 100 degrees, and the shelf time on it is two years and it is non-toxic. So obviously there is a lot of people out there on the market making coolants, uh, the main one being the likes of Mayhem's. How this is actually gonna sort of stack up, we'd have to, I guess, do another video where we kind of do some fair tests. We have another bottle of the XL5 Performance Coolant there. In terms of radiators, again, with a black and yellow theme, so we have the XR5 360 degrees. So triple 120, the thickness of this is 30 mil. So we have a 30 mil thick 360 rad. And then we've got the XR5 uh, 240. So again, this looks like a 30 mil. Uh, 30 mil thickness, uh, these aren't cross flow radiators or anything like that, they are just what they're meant to be. By the looks of it, they are fully copper. A premium copper radiator core and 25 micron thick cooling fins, optimized for low noise fans. And as we know, Corsair fans are pretty impressive. Other than that, we have the tubing. So this is the Hardline tubing, XT Hardline. I'm not quite sure why they've got sort of so many different things. So we've got the XF adapters and fittings, we've got the XR radiators, and then we have the XT tubing. 
So there's one meter tubing in here. There's three lots of it. If we open that up and have a little look, obviously there's loads of different brands out there for hardline tubing. Some of them do kind of your satin. Some of them do kind of the clear. Um, is this acrylic? PMMA, okay. So yeah, obviously there are different types out there. So you've got acrylic, you've got uh, pet G. Uh, so yeah, we'll see kind of, you know, the quality of this when it comes to bending it, because that is going to be the main thing that's going on there. So we've got three lots in each and we have two lots. So yeah, so I've got a total of six meters worth of that. Other than that, that's it for this box. So what I'm going to do now is just chuck this out of the way and we can get on with this, which I'm guessing is going to be the main thing that we're going to be want to be looking at in terms of your GPU blocks, CPU blocks, and I'm guessing maybe some more RADs. Can't actually remember what Corsair was sending me, but let's move this out of the way and start with this one. Okay, so next box, this one is admittedly a slightly different size and quite a bit heavier as well. So I'm expecting this to, uh, as I mentioned, have all of our um, copper blocks in there. Uh, so CPU block, GPU block. I remember Corsair actually asking me because this product, product line has been delayed for a little bit. I'm not quite sure why. I know Corsair being Corsair, they do like to kind of, you know, perfect things. They want it to be the very best it could be. It could even come down to the packaging or the performance of the product. They scrutinize so much when it comes to R&D and that's why they are kind of one of the market leaders. Okay, okay, okay. I was not expecting this. This is cool. So instead of like the other box that just had a variety of boxes in there, this is a little bit different. Yeah. This is cool. I'm guessing there are 50 review kits out there. This is number 26. So 26 out of 50, I'm guessing that's what that is. Uh, Corsair Hydro X series. Now I've got to be honest, the name to start with is pretty damn impressive. I do like the name Hydro X. It sounds premium, it sounds extreme, it sounds kind of everything you'd expect from Corsair. Now this feels, I mean, it's, it's heavy for one. You know, I'm not the strongest guy out there, but yeah, this is pretty damn heavy. But yeah, I like this. This is pretty cool. It would be nice if, and I don't know whether this kind of general design is gonna be for consumers. I'm guessing not because on the grand scheme of things, I know what's inside here because I remember saying of course that I've got the ability to test these CPUs. I got the ability to test these GPUs, blah, 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 blah. But I'm guessing when it comes to kind of this, it's gonna be, they couldn't in theory make this for all of the different, you know, SKUs out there. So we have Corsair Hydro X series. So let's take a look and see what's inside. So on closer inspection, this is actually a Pelican case. There is a little uh, thing on here that says genuine Pelican case. So Corsair haven't really spared, haven't spared any expense on this uh, for reviewers. I'm guessing they want this, well, it looks good. It looks good, guys. They want it to obviously be the latest and greatest and look absolutely amazing. So inside, this is what we have. A proper full on Pelican case uh, with foam, which you know you can cut out. I might even use this for you know other purposes. But these are kind of the main core components that we're looking at. So we have Hydro X series, we've got the XD5. So as I say, everything's got kind of its own name. So we've got the XF, we've got the XR5, we've got the uh, XL5 with the coolant, we have the XD5. So I'm guessing just by the name that this is gonna be a uh, D5 pump res combo. High performance D5 PWM pump. Obviously, when it comes to pumps, you could go for a variety of different pumps. D5 is probably my favorite. Yes, it does have kind of a low range hum to it, but generally it lasts the test of time and is pretty silent overall, as well as pushing through high flow, um, high, high levels of flow, high levels of pressure, however you want to word it. So we have this uh, 250 mil acrylic reservoir with integrated fill port. So, uh, and it looks, I'm guessing that there is some kind of RGB or the actual acrylic itself. It's kind of got that um, incandescent, iridescent, incandescent. I'm losing my words today, guys, but yeah, you know what I mean. Uh, in terms of the CPU blocks, so we have the XC9 RGB CPU water block. This is for LGA 2066 and Threadripper, so TR4. Looks absolutely amazing. I mean, I, 
I'm not that surprised because I have seen these designs before. As I say, we did a few news articles where a retailer actually leaked out all of the pictures, all of the pricing, all of the specs. So we did see this in the past, but it is nice to kind of, you know, see it up close and personal. So that is the XC9, which I'm guessing, yeah, gonna be their top end one because it is for Threadripper and the Intel HEDT. For the majority of people out there, you're gonna be looking at the XC7. These are both RGB addressable. Um, this is for 11 5X and AM4. So yeah, there's gonna be obviously various brackets in there. I do quite like the packaging on these. They're very, very slim. Yes, they are a little bit bigger than what you'd expect from other brands where you kind of end up with quite a small box, but they're normally quite chunky. In terms of the GPU block, we have the XG7 RGB. So this is a water block for the RTX 2080 Founders Edition. And then we have the XG7 RGB for the RTX 2080 Ti Founders Edition. So yeah, um, the only thing I seem to be missing, and I will be obviously contacting Corsair about this, is, um, well, the tubing. I have no soft tubing. Maybe they're expecting me to use my own, but I was kind of expecting that to come because I have got the various fittings for it. Yes, I have got hardline fittings, but there are soft tube fittings, uh, compression fittings as well. So I was expecting soft tubing to come along because essentially in this video, I want to actually build up something and give you a better look at how this all kind of, you know, ties in together and looks when it's actually in a full, uh, fully fledged build. So yeah, let's see what we can do with that and uh, move on from there. Back in a bit. So here we are. Uh, basically, I managed to build this all up and a little Provazo kind of, you know, disclaimer here. It's actually the day, well, it's literally a couple of hours before I meant to be leaving with Computex. So we have kind of rushed it a little bit. I really, really wanted to do a hardline system, but instead I just kind of opted for this because I thought having it in an open air bench would be probably the best way of showing off each individual component. And as always, we will put loads of B-roll into this so you can kind of see exactly how everything looks. So I did manage to find some soft tubing. It's not made by Corsair, but I did speak to Corsair in the meantime and basically the soft tubing that they were meant to be sending out has just been delayed a little bit. So, you know, let's blame the courier. That's probably the easiest way. So just going through kind of everything, there was a couple of things that I actually wanted to talk about. So um, in terms of obviously um, the pump res combo, kind of mounted it in such a way that it kind of looks a bit like a watchtower looking over the system. I think that worked really nicely. And I actually made the, uh, the runs on the soft tube in quite straight. So they do kind of have that look or essence of a hardline kit. Uh, once it's paired up with all of the nice ML120 Pro uh, fans, I've got to admit, it looks absolutely amazing. But kind of the main thing that I know Corsair want to sort of talk about with the whole Hydro series, Hydro X series, is going to be the GPU block and the CPU block. So the CPU block, as I mentioned earlier, there is um, kind of multiple ones depending on the platform of choice. So whether you're going down the uh, AM4 or 1150X route, or if you're going down the um, Threadripper or HEDT X299 route. Now, with the one that we've used, uh, we have used this on an 1150X system, uh, and it has got kind of a black shroud to it, whereas the one for um, the 2666 and the Threadripper has actually got a silver shroud. Now, I'm not actually sure whether these are interchangeable or whether you'll be able to buy a black one or a silver one. Um, it's probably in the reviewer's guide, and I probably should have looked this all up, but. As I mentioned, I'm actually off to Computex in a couple of hours. Uh, once you watch this video, I'll already be there, but you get it. Um, so yeah, it'd be interesting to know if you can get this to kind of, you know, um, go with your theme based around what you're doing with your system. So uh, yeah, that's definitely something that we'll look at in kind of future videos. Now, the other thing I really, really like, and this is the important thing, I guess, to me, it kind of, I don't know, out of water cooling and custom loop, I would say the Corsair Hydro X series appeals to novices and noobs more than any other brand out there. Sorry EK, sorry Bits Power, sorry Alpha Call, sorry everyone else, but it's the little things. So there's pre-applied thermal paste, which you know isn't a great big deal, but there is pre-applied thermal paste on the CPU block. It's just taking out an added step that potentially someone could get wrong. Now on CPUs, you can't really get it wrong. You could do the line method, you could do the P method, you could do the kind of cross union jack, you could do the verge bird ship method. Um, you know, there are various different ways of doing it. But the thing that I really, really like, and I actually told um, Corsair this as soon as I saw it, comes down to the GPU block. Now what they've actually done with the GPU block 
is they have put pre-applied thermal paste on it, which is really, really nice because on GPUs, it is quite paramount that you get the thermal paste kind of spread very evenly uh, on top of the actual GPU die. But the main thing that I absolutely love is they really have thought about sort of novice users, noobs, and they've put all of this on there for you. So you have your thermal pads on there because for anyone who's done custom loot before, you will know from EK Vector series, from the Alphacore Ice Blocks, uh, GPX, from all of the other brands out there, you literally get a stack of these thermal pads and you're actually expected to cut them down into size. And to be honest, I can't be the only one. They never actually fit perfectly. You could go by the measurements that it says in the manual, it never works. This is all done for you. So literally, you can take apart your GPU, hopefully everything kind of comes you know, apart very, very easily. And then you just kind of lay this down, lay your GPU on, obviously do it sort of slightly off of a desk because of the IO shield, and then get the back plate and just screw through. It's, it really couldn't be any simpler. Yes, you're gonna have to do a little bit of cleaning on your GPU, but if you're gonna put a custom loop on, you'd have to do that anyway. But this saved so much time. So talking about the GPU block, the main thing that I really wanna talk about is actually how cool it really does look. We've got this nice little flow meter that you can see going around. So if you are sort of looking at this, because looking at their pump res combo, it doesn't actually look like much is going on. Sometimes depending on the res and the pump that you've actually got, you can see kind of bubbles circulating around and things like that. On this, it looks pretty, you know, still. So you may be looking at it and thinking, well, I'm using soft tubing. I can't really see if anything's flowing around. So that's when you would put a flow meter in. They've already saved you the hassle and stuck it inside the GPU. That's not to say that they're not gonna come out with fittings at a later date and little flow meters built into it, but this is just a nice thing to have on the GPU. Sadly, there isn't one on the CPU. So unless you are using this, you know, that may cause some issues, but it's just a nice little added extra. And the addressable RGB, I mean, Corsair, any product made by Corsair, unless it had RGB, it wouldn't be worth its while. And what they've done here is taken RGB to the next level. We have addressable RGB lighting all the way around the sort of plexi bit on the GPU block. We also have it on the CPU block, and then we also have it on the reservoir as well. And it just looks absolutely amazing. Of course, you can control all this through the IQ software, so you can sort of, you know, go absolutely ballistic with it. You can match it up with your memory, like we've got kind of the whole rainbow lighting effect going on, same with the ML120 RGB fans, but really the possibilities are endless. So what I'm actually hoping to do, because as I mentioned all the way through this video, I have kind of been rushing around and trying to get this done as soon as possible. We did have kind of a few niggly little problems with the lighting. I've never been a fan of any manufacturer's kind of software, but IQ, we got there in the end and actually managed to, to sort it all out. But when I've got a little bit more time, I'm hoping to kind of drain all this down, take everything apart and put it in a system. I've actually got a 680X sitting down next to me. I just haven't had time to strip out what's in there, put all this in with the hardline kit. So if you wanna see that, let me know in the comments section below and I will kind of transplant this whole system into the 680X with two radiators because at the moment we have just got the single 360. Luckily they, they are the ML uh, Pro fans. They are extremely high pressure fo uh, flow fans. So we are able to kind of run you know, CPU and a GPU under the same loop, but it would be nice to maybe get it in the 680X, put the 360 in there, and also I've got down by my feet a 240 mil rad that I showed you earlier on, and just have something that, you know, is a little bit more complete, shall we say. For me, as a test bench, this is pretty much, you know, what I need. I have also got a practice test bench that I'll be doing, so maybe I'll do some stuff with that as well, just to kind of go through a little bit more and show you a little bit more about this. But we have been on a rush, but hopefully it kind of gave you a general idea as to what it's all about. We know just from speaking to Corsair that they really wanted to sort of push the emphasis on the GPU block and the CPU block. And to be honest, it's probably the nicest looking CPU blocks and GPU blocks I've seen in a very, very long time. Let me know in the comments section what you think about that. Other than that, there's not really much else to go through. We will put obviously all the pricing for all of the kit up so you can sort of see and compare uh, how it sort of, you know, fares against the likes of EK, Alpha Call, Bits Power, Barrow, and all the other brands out there on the market. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Sorry, it's been a bit of a weird one. Like I say, kind of had to muddle through it as best we could. It took a little while to, you know, actually build this all up. It's taken kind of multiple days and preparing for Computex as well. So uh, we will also be checking by the uh, the Corsair suite at uh, Computex in the Hyatt Hotel, and they will be showing off obviously all of this kit 
probably in a hardline build. I'm guessing probably in a 680X. So maybe they've actually saved me a job there. But we will be checking all that out, getting video coverage and written content as well. So you'll be able to see a little bit more. And this will be released, I believe, if you're watching this video now, it'll be after the 6th of June. Technically, this isn't a review. We haven't done any kind of performance figures, but there's no real way to do that on an open air test bench because there's so many variables, especially with the weather going crazy at the moment. Um, but yeah, I'm going to stop rambling on. Hopefully you enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one. See you later, guys. Bye-bye.